drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'll be talking to Lance Shainer of Omega Yeast Labs. Lance is one of the two founders of the company and is a well-known and respected authority on yeast. Within this interview I asked Lance to explain files for us and also to tell us what is coming next. So let's get to it. Yeah, so I'm here with Lance from uh, Omega Yeast. Uh, nice to see you again, Lance. Good to see you. Um, tell me, what's exciting you uh, the most right now? Uh, so what we've been talking to brewers about this year are, uh, is a new series of yeast that we have coming out that express the ALDC enzyme, uh, which produces diacetyl, essentially turns uh, alpha-acetolactate into um, acetoin, which does, does not have the uh, flavor or aroma to it. Uh, same thing that yeast will eventually uh, trans uh, transform diacetyl to, uh, but this just does it much more efficiently. So uh, we're taking a very purposeful approach and finding strains that have more issues with diacetyl. Uh, for example, in terms of like dry hop creep, where you get a diacetyl spike and slow reduction of that, uh, making sure we uh, use those yeasts and, and give them the capability of reducing uh, diacetyl. And, with these strains, uh, in most cases, we don't, we don't even have any detectable diacetyl by a machine, let alone um, oh, wow. aromatically. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, at the most we get five parts per billion, which is well below the aroma threshold, the flavor threshold for it. Uh, so with these strains, you'll never have um, diacetyl. Um, it does, obviously, it does not stop hop creep. Uh, if there's still going to be enzymes provided by the hops that cause a little more re-fermentation, that still happens, but you don't get that diastole spike that you sometimes get. Uh, so it should be a very good tool for brewers. Right. Yeah, so I noticed you guys are pretty big on file releasing uh, yeast. Is that something that you could talk to us a little bit about so that people can understand uh, you know, the benefits of that and what it will actually deliver for them? Absolutely. Uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, kind of started down this research path and our first yeast that we released that could release these aromatic files uh, is a strain called Cosmic Punch, and that utilizes an enzyme that's actually native to yeast already. It's just not normally expressed. So what we changed about the yeast was uh, turning that enzyme on when it's not normally on. Uh, and what that does is allows the yeast to take these uh, inert precursors that are naturally present in both malt and hops and release a thiol called 3SH that has uh, aromas of passion fruit and grapefruit. Um, so it's really giving you more uh, aromatic capability from, uh, from you know, precursors that are just already present in your recipes. Um, and then we went from there and uh, because that enzyme doesn't uh, quite get to all of the precursor that is available to it, there's a, a bacterial enzyme called PAT-B that we engineered into some different strains that does the same thing but more efficiently. Uh, and, and releases up to 10 to 15,000 parts per trillion uh, of this 3SH thiol, keeping in mind that the uh, precursor, or the, the aromatic threshold for that is around 60 parts per trillion, so it's okay. way above the aromatic yeah, threshold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does this very, very efficiently and gives you really uh, interesting smelling beers. Um, now, thiols can be a little polarizing uh, because they are very potent uh, compounds. Um, but it really gives you kind of a, a tropical aroma that'll uh, help your beer kind of stand out. So presumably you did a lot of testing on the amount that you wanted to offer people on this. So uh, you believe that you have the balance of that, correct? Yeah, so really with, with, with Cosmic Punch and uh, Heliogazer, it's, those are both based on the same strain. So what we call our British Five, uh, and they release very different uh, levels of thiol. So you can get kind of dial it in uh, by choosing whichever strain you want. And even beyond that, uh, dry hopping affects how we perceive these thiols. So when you do more heavy dry hopping, it minimizes the perception of the thiols. They're still there, but there's a little bit of masking going on. So you can kind of dial in the level you want based on the amount of dry hop load you have, whirlpool hopping, which strain you choose, uh, whether you have wheat in there, because wheat, for example, does not have any precursors. So adding wheat to your recipe would be a way to diminish the thiol output. So there are a lot of dials you can use to kind of push it in certain directions, depending on what you're looking for. Oh, that's really interesting. Well, thanks very much for your time, Lance. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Look out for more content on my channel of interviews filmed at the Craft Brewers Conference and Brew Expo America 2023. 
At the point of making this video, I already have made live the interviews that you see on screen now that I believe should be of interest to all types of brewers with content featuring general brewing information, equipment as well as yeast and hops. I also have more coming on top of this in the future too. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!